this is Morten from the Swedish melodic death metal band This Ending. And you are listening to The Bloodshed with a vampire on Metal Messiah Radio International. And we would like to congratulate Metal Messiah Radio for his 13th fucking anniversary. Hooray! Hey! <laughs> Martin, uh, it's a great pleasure to have you here at the Metal Bloodshed with a vampire on Metal Messiah Radio International. Thank you very much, man. Okay, to go over to talk about this great band, this ending, combining the unrelenting assault of death metal with melodic edge and technical precision that only sharpened their impact. Swedish this ending released their first album, Inside the Machine, last 2006, and we are here to talk about this great band and their new album, Needles of Rust, without have to reveal so much so earlier, Martin. Well, what can the fans expect of this brand new opus, Needles of Rust? Well, first and foremost, I think it's a very diverse album, so uh, you will not be expecting to hear the complete album sounding like the same in each song. It's gonna be diverse for you. It's gonna be groovy. It's gonna be brutal. It's gonna be grind. You get everything that you would like in a brutal metal album, I would say. So if you're into melodic death metal and want it a bit more brutal than usual, I think this is the album for you. Okay, you guys heard it. Even more brutal than ever. <laughs> okay. To talk about this, I mean, at least the first two singles that I already heard, you know, really impact me. And uh, I believe out there is the same cases with all uh, the metal fans. I really hope so. From the comments I've seen on YouTube and so on on our uh, Facebook, seems like people seem to appreciate what we have achieved. <laughs> okay. Long before this ending, Martin, you guys already was working together in a very well-known and awesome band, I must say. You as the singer Martin Hansen, percussionist was uh, Frederick Anderson and uh, guitarist Linus Niebra whom joined the forces to assemble an uncompromised metal band back in 1991 and with the later addition of Jasper Lofgren on bass and Leo Pion on guitar the group adopted the name Canarus Quintet that was back in 1994 did you guys all knew each other already before you formed a Canarus Quintet how was the metal scene back then when you guys started the band well I guess everything started out around 89 when the death metal scene started to grow here in Stockholm and Gothenburg and we traveled around met people, had parties went to shows traveled everywhere in the country wherever bands would go wherever people into death metal went and then when albums like Altars of Madness and the first Paradise Lost album Lost Paradise, Edge of Sanity and so on, when we heard heard all of these bands, we thought we should also try to do something. So from the start, we all just was a bunch of friends meeting up at a rehearsal space and just having fun. And then a few of us decided to start bands and turned out one of the bands is another, at least for me, legendary Swedish melodic death metal band called Internal Decay that turned out from this also. And we started out as under the name Departed at first. And then we continued continued as a Canaris Quartet and I believe it was already in 1993 we changed to a Canaris Quintet because we added another guitar player. Okay. And okay. the first demo the time of autumn. All right. Talking about this band under the moniker of Canaris Quintet, you guys have released two full-length albums in 1996, uh, Silence of the World Beyond in 1998. You guys have released The Only Pure Hate, the band that had pre- Form numerous shows with act like at the gates, uh, dissection, hypocrisy, and edge of sanity. Just to mention some, in 1998, the band decided to go on separate ways. How was the two albums being accepted by fans, and why the decision to go on separate ways, Martin? Well, I think when we released Silence of the World Beyond.
beyond everything, it was just going straight forward and the label were pushing us. And then we, especially me, wanted to do it a bit more brutal. So I pushed for it in that direction. And that was what came out on The Only Pure Hate. And we had some trouble with The Only Pure Hate because apparently we chose the wrong studio for our music. Sunlight did a great job, but something happened in the mixing and mastering process. So it didn't turn out as good as it sounded in the studio. We were, of course, disappointed because we had put in a lot of effort into this album to make it like the Slayer version of the Silence of the World Beyond. And yeah, fans seemed to like it. We were offered tours and so on, but we needed support since we were youngsters with no decent jobs, no real income, and the label said that they wouldn't give us the money. It wasn't much. We were asking for like two, three thousand euros to do a five week tour. It was a lot of frustration building up then when we didn't get the support from the label. And in the end, then it just didn't feel like it was any purpose to continue since we had a deal for at least three more albums with the label. But this album, The Only Pure Hate, was re-released back in 2018. Yeah, for the 20th anniversary of it. Yeah, this was one of the reasons why we re-recorded it, because we thought we have to do it with the sound that the music deserves. And I think on the new version, you can really hear the impact that the songs should have had with the production. (laughs) Okay, this one you have done through Black Lodge Records. Yeah, that's true. And that's kind of like part of the guys from the first record label. And they felt that they could help us with this. We needed to make things happen quick so everything could get out before 2018 was over. Okay, okay. Now I understand. So these guys that used to work for or used to be part of No Fashion Records felt the need to approach you guys back in order to offer to release this album. Yeah, it was more or less our idea. And when we presented that we had this recording and they heard it, then they saw no problem in releasing it. Martin, after separating from your bandmates of Canaris Quintet, you joined October Tide to step in for no other than Johan Srengse, lead vocalist of Cantatonia and guitarist of Bloodbath. And later you also joined bands like Sins of Omission, The Plague and Water. What can you tell us about your experience? Your experience? Is about being with these bands? Well, with October Tide, it was just the thing that Jonas had contacted Don Swana and asked if he had a, some tips for a singer that could sing on the next October Tide album. And then apparently he suggested me and we already knew each other. So he contacted me and two weeks later I was in the studio recording the album without having rehearsed one time. <laughs> and it went good. I would say so, because I, I laid down all the vocals in two days and had never heard the songs before and also got to have some input on, on how uh, the vocals should be. Okay, you went in the studio to record this, but the songs was written by Jonas? Yeah, for sure. And I guess some of the other guys must have been involved too. It was a really cool experience just to uh, enter the studio not having heard a tone, because I (laughs) trust Jonas when it comes to writing music, so I didn't feel uh, unsecure that it would be a bad album that I was going to sing on. I knew it was going to be good stuff. Yeah, and you was there only for one album, right? Yeah, that's true. Any reason you really didn't want to continue with them? Yeah, it was nothing we ever discussed since uh, October Tide was more or less a project back then and became like a real band uh, later on. Okay. And how about the other bands I just mentioned? Well, Sins of a Mission was the same thing there. I think it was Martin that called me up and asked if I would like to try to sing Sins of a Mission. So I went there, did a rehearsal, and they thought it, it worked great. So uh, then from then on, we uh, continued. And the same thing there it was really great to play together. But then, yeah. Things got in the way and Martin, he uh, started with this member and there was no time for a sense of a mission and yeah. But at least we got to do one really amazing tour with lots of sick memories from. <laughs> <laughs> Martin formed in 2005 this ending, emerged 
from the ashes of Canarus Quintet. After seven years of break, the members from the last active lineup reach a conclusion to start a new era and to write music freely, escaping from expectation and functioning under a new uh, moniker. When and how you guys have decided to go back together and to reform, if I may so, if I'm wrong, please correct me, reform a Canaris Quintet under a new name and why this ending as the band new name, yeah. When it came to reforming as a Canaris Quintet, that wasn't an option because we wanted just to see how things would play out and we didn't want to be set by any expectations how we should sound. We just wanted to play together again because we are all good friends and wanted to have fun. And when we started out, we tried to make things that sounded a bit different than a Canaris Quintet, a bit more mechanical and so on. And yeah, we just wanted to experiment and see what came out of it and have fun, of course. So I would say it was from the ashes of a Canaris Quintet, but never with the intention to be a Canaris Quintet. And you never used any music that was or meant or was written um, to be recorded under a Canaris Quintet for this ending. Well, I think for the two last albums, some of the stuff could have been used for a Canaris Quintet, but not what we did on the first two albums. But I think what changed it all was when we were approached to do the compilation Quintessence for Cyclone Empire. Then we started to dig around rehearsal tapes and stuff like that and found some really good songs from the 90s that we re-recorded and it just was a lot of fun. So we felt like, okay, we need to incorporate parts of the quintet sound into this ending too because this is who we are. Now we have found our shape and we will continue from this. Very great. As I said, the band's first album, Inside the Machine, was released in 2006, followed by Death Harvest in 2009, and The Garden of Death in 2016. Yeah, along the years has been different lineup changes where Jasper Lofgren and Leo Pigeon <laughs> left the band in 2014, and most recently, Fedrick Anderson, who was also part of Eman Amar Drummer and now with Myronat, and Netherbird and Kavin. Yeah, Frederick parked a ways with the band when the new album, Needles of Ross, was almost completed. And the leaving of Frederick had indeed put the band in a complex situation. But fortunately, you guys yeah, already had the great satisfaction to have work with Peter Nagy, who joined the ranks as a second guitarist. But uh, Peter Nagy is a great drummer himself with the band Mark Greening. And so he accepted the challenge to take over the drum kit, replacing Frederick. My question is, what was the main reason beside the other bands that Frederick decided to leave the band? And if you don't mind, please present us the band current lineup. Well, if we start with Frederick and why he left the band, I would say it was partly because he felt like we needed to work even more on the songs to make them even better. And he didn't want to slow us down. So he felt it was better for him to step down because we were quite satisfied with how the songs for the new album were sounding. And I think it was just uh, his way of uh, letting go of the control. Mm -hmm. We are still good friends, so it was nothing that had to do with something personal, it was more the artistic part. Okay, understood. So uh, who else complete the band's lineup now, uh, Martin? And the cool thing is, before we recorded Garden of Death, so around 2013 or something like that, Linus Pettersson, Linkan, joined us. And he was actually bass player in a Canaris Quartet. Okay. <laughs> and also quintet for a while. He played with us until around 94. So we got back a dear old friend into the band. And then me and Linus, we have uh, always been part of this ending, Linus Nierbrandt. Okay. And after we recorded uh, Garden of Death, we wanted to do a release party show. But we didn't have the second guitarist, as you said, uh, Leo had left the band. And then Friedrich actually called up Peter Nagy, an old friend of ours, and asked if he, he would uh, step up and play guitars with us. And I don't think it took him long to decide, uh, as he's, uh, we're fans of each other's music, you could say. <laughs> if I'm not wrong, correct me. 
he took over only the guitar or also the drum now? Now he's taking over the drums, but uh, when it comes to the live part, we're not sure if he's going to play guitars or drums live. It's up to him. I mean, okay. with the current situation, live shows aren't uh, really uh, what you're planning at the moment, but looking into it. So on my part, he's a great guitar player. He's a great drummer, so it doesn't <laughs> matter. He, he <laughs> can decide what he prefers to do. <laughs> Okay, yeah. okay, you also have work with Gart also, not Darkent and Paul uh, Norgrim, ex Dark Funeral, doing back and forth. Tell us more about this, please. It was Linus Nierbrandt. He thought it would be fun to have some guest vocals for the first time on uh, this ending album. And I thought, sure, why not? Could be fun. And then Paul Temgoroth, he, he's an old friend of ours, and uh, he heard the songs and really liked it. So he said, sure, pick a brutal one for me. He's doing the lead vocals on the second chorus on the Devastate. All right. And it turned out really cool. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I heard it. And how about uh, um... Gord? Gord, yeah. Yeah. Gord uh, is also a friend of the band because Linus Nierbrandt also plays in Dark End and he thought that Gord has a really cool death metal voice that could fit very well to one of the songs on the album. So yeah, we went ahead with that and he's now doing vocals on, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was Eclipse of the Dead. Besides Yeah Goat, Hurt Gods and Angel Blast, I'm not sure if he's part of another band. Yeah, that's about it. It was really easy going and uh, everything uh, worked out great with the guest vocals. So uh, I've actually never met Gord myself, but he seems to be a really nice guy and uh, also liking the new album. So that's great. Yeah, to go further up with this interview in 2016, the band had released its last album, Garden of the Dead via Apostasy Record, and it's really been five years, Martin, since then. Another great album the band did, put out and enlarging the band's catalog even more. This album still reminds me of great songs like Torrents of Soul, Dark uh, Samaritan, the self-titled Gardens of Death, and many, many more great tunes on this album. Looking back five years since this great album was released, what are yeah the great memories about it? And are you satisfied for what the band has achieved with? Yeah, I think the Garden of Death album came out great. I still love it when I listen to it now and then. And one of my all-time favorite songs that I've been singing on that album, the song Black and Shrine. That's exactly up my alley, how I want music to sound. It's like, can't believe I've been part of writing that song because it came out so great.
returning with a true melodic death metal masterpiece called Needles of Rust. I must say, the new album has already been felt last September when the band released a lyric video for the single Annihilate, followed last March with the premiere of an other lyric video for the song Devastate. And most recently, you guys have released the last lyric video for the song called Needles of Rust. Martin, please describe us. All behind these songs, I just mentioned their content, the reason to have chosen them as the promotional track. Well, let's start with Annihilate then. That is just a straightforward, I think, the song that combines everything that this ending has stood for through the years. So it's thrashy, it's fast, and it's, at least in my ears, it's kind of catchy. And lyric-wise, I think it's also more important than ever because the lyrics are dealing with the topic of uh, how we are handling our Mother Earth. <laughs> and it seems like some of us really want to annihilate it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> every day, every single day, Martin. That's ah, horrible. And then we released Devastate. It was me pushing for having that as the second single because that's like, yeah, if we had Black and Shrine on Garden of Death, this is my new Black and Shrine. I really love Devastate. It's the same thing there. It's just right up my alley. It's brutal, catchy in your face. And I got a comment from an old friend when he heard the song and he said, wow, man, it's the best song you ever did. I've got a heart on. <laughs> wow. Yes. Lyric-wise, also very close to heart topic for me. It's what happens to people when they are always pushed down and stepped on and mistreated. Wow. Okay. Yeah, most recently you guys have released also the self-titled lyric video for the song Needles of Ross. Yeah, and I think that's a really cool piece. It, I think it's a bit of, of an involvement in our sound. It's uh, very uh, diverse. It's melodic and also once again a very interesting topic for me to write about because we all read in the news about doctors physicians etc that uh, don't follow the guidelines like you should <laughs> and yeah indirectly then uh, injects us with needles of rust if i may ask have this song has to do with this COVID thing that now we all have to get this vaccine uh, you could think so <laughs> but uh, yeah, going back then, you have the pig flu, I guess it's called. <laughs> okay. That one. That's true. That's true. And yeah, that was kind of uh, some brutal side effects with the uh, young people getting in real trouble from that vaccine. Hardly it could be about that, but mainly it's how we experiment on people. Okay. Martin, please tell us why have you decided to add the 2019 single, The Haunted, as the bonus track on this album? This single, The Haunted, has never been released in physical form. And I think the song is awesome and was also a bit prophetic if you read the lyrics closely, because this was recorded and written before the pandemic. But when you read the lyrics, it's a bit of prophecy in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so in other words, this song really fits the album. Uh... Yeah, but I mean, it's been a part of this process of building up the Needles of Rust album, because we've always been writing songs. We have maybe 30 songs that we haven't used. So we all had some songs that we had been working on for like 10 years. God damn it, now we're going to make them work. <laughs> because they all had these things that we wanted in the songs, but we just haven't been able to get it together. So it flows like the ever-flowing stream this member mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> Needles of Ross was recorded, mix and master at Wing Studio by his worker, Wittgren, who is well known in the scene with records from bands such as Diabolical, Wildwood, Demonical, Watain, etc. Was Frederick Anderson also part of the songwriting? My first question. And how was the recording process? Yeah, please give us the detail. The work done at Wing Studio with uh, Swerver Wittgren, please. Yeah, Frederick, if we start out there, the first song on the album, really fast song really nice 
that's mostly his work. So yeah, he's been involved, but uh, as usual, it's mostly uh, Linus Nierbrandt and then Peter and Linus Linkan Pettersson working together. And we're all just working together to improve the songs. I mean, I ended up changing vocal harmonies and rhythms, how, how things should be sung. So I think the last changes were made maybe one week before I recorded the, the vocals. So okay. it was... It was a really uh, alive, living process when we uh, worked on this album. And then recording with the Sverker, perfect. Peter had already worked with him, playing the drums on the new uh, Mercurining album, so they already knew how they would work together. So everything went really smoothly, and Sverker is really professional, and I think he's gotten a really... Uh, distinct and clear sound to the new album so that you can hear all parts so listening in your head you can hear each instrument it's a good separation and i think it's a good push in the sound don't think this ending have ever sounded so good on an album yeah so you you're very satisfied with your first experience with him right i knew sverker from earlier and so uh, And we've all seen and heard what he can do. And for us, it felt like it was the the right place for us to go this time. And it worked out great. And we could have a lot of input when it comes to the, the mixing and the mastering and how everything should sound. So he was very open-minded. Okay, to give the album cover the necessary atmospheric beyond Gosses of a illustration was hired once again as on the previous album garden of death to take care of the artwork you went over for the services of beyond gooses again but what was the band's demand and expectation this time considering that we were extremely pleased with his work on the garden of death i think it's an awesome cover he made for us we only had the highest expectations and he actually did two covers for us that we could uh, choose between so he first gave us uh, one idea that we thought was cool but it didn't really uh, work out with the sound of the new album and then he had uh, already presented another idea and did that one too and this is what's the cover of the new album now and I think it fits really well and it was the same thing there it's uh, very good to work with we could come with input so if you're a fan of this ending and you look closely uh, on the this cover you can see that there, there are links to garden of death there <laughs> yeah 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 that's right but you know i love how he created you know or you guys have created this you know all these needles pointing upwards you know and uh, all these skulls there you know yeah and you know, all the you know replaced body parts that have ended up on this heap of yeah it's like a pile of yeah body parts yeah artificial body, body parts <laughs> <laughs> skulls and so on and Got the cool uh, yeah. the cool thing is that uh, he wanted to make it to look like the needles were part of a, an organ so if you look really closely uh, at the picture and search for details you will also find like the keys for the organ there yeah it must be here somewhere <laughs> i have to really check it good out <laughs> Yeah, well, we're like yeah, detail but... freaks in the band. So, and he's the only one who's been able to deliver this so far for on our parts because yeah, he's really talented and he seems to understand how we are thinking. Okay, to go to the last part of the interview, Martin Stockholm Melodic Death Group this ending brand new album Needles of Ross is slated for worldwide release on June 11th via Black Lion Record. I like to thank Oliver Dahlbeck and you, Martin, for this great interview. First of all, this album was supposed to be released on May 28th before. Why has it been moved to June 11th instead? Yeah, you have to talk to the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> When uh, we were talking with Oliver, he said that it's much harder to get stuff in time at the moment. And so that's why like the vinyl, I guess, will appear in autumn or something, because it was really, really long time to wait for the pressing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. After that work with Metal Blade Records and Apostasy Record, tell us, about this joinment with Black Lion Record and how are things going? Yeah, I think things are going well and Oliver 
and Marcos, who is also working with Black Lion, they are helping us to the best of their abilities. And when we were looking for a new record deal, they were the ones who seemed the most eager to release the album and really showed interest and really showed that they appreciate the music that we are writing. So it seemed like they really wanted us to join their label was not something they did only to be nice, but they really wanted us there. That's at least the impression I've got. And that's a good one. Good impression. For sure. <laughs> okay, Needles of Rust deals with different kind of nightmare scenarios. Some songs are loosely based on actual events that have happened all over the world, whereas the other numbers are just about nightmares and overall a phenomenon. The album contains eight original songs plus the remix version of 2019 single The Haunted as a bonus track in a physical format. On this record, this ending continues blending relentless aggression and absolute darkness into their grandiose melodic dreamscape. In how many format will the band's diehard fans be able to buy this album and how about the merchandise as um, Martin? The CD will arrive now next, oh, the coming Friday. Yeah. And uh, we have also uh, cassettes on the way in. Okay. And then, like I said, in autumn, it should come a really nice vinyl where I think the artwork will shine even more. Wow. And of course, on all digital platforms and so on. And we have also been working on a really nice T-shirt with the cover art. So uh, that's the plan for now. And then uh, we'll see how it goes further. But so for now, there are no T-shirts. So T-shirt, the fans have to wait just a little bit, right? Yeah, I guess the T-shirts shouldn't take too long to uh, get printed because it seems like Oliver uh, has uh, worked a lot with the guy who is printing the shirts. Do you know if the vinyl will come in more colors besides black yeah I, from what i've seen it will come at like a you know 70s orange color okay. looked really cool together with the cover <laughs> all right so and these finals the fans can already start pre-order or they have to wait till no pre-order is possible i mean oliver he's uh, the guy in charge here so black lion you can pre-order everything there mark i'm talking about this 70s orange color or was it orange or yellow orange orange yes is this going to be available in a small quantity or are they going to be available in a large quantity it all depends on what you're calling small quantities but i think if i remember it right it would be like 300 copies or something so a pretty small amount of the uh, records so to all the fans out there you have to hurry up get in touch with the band get in touch with the label to order yours because i mean after 300 it's gone no more and especially for you that like to collect vinyls yeah don't wait too long to order this martin i want to thank you very much for having made this interview possible and i want to hand you over the microphone of madame messiah radio for you to invite all your friends all your friends to support the band to buy the band's previous album and to buy this great new album needles of Ross that that will be released this coming June via the Prestige Black Lion Records. Yeah. <laughs> all you guys out there who are into melodic death metal, all you who are true Descending fans, make sure to pre-order now because we are hoping it sells out really fast. And <laughs> when it comes to the old album, Garden of Death, I think that will be a hard one to catch because that's sold out as far as I know. So you'll have to keep your eyes peeled on eBay or something. But okay. however, we really hope you will enjoy the new album. We really like it and we hope you will too. So let's keep it fucking metal. <laughs> Martin, uh, what are the band's plans to promote this great new album? And especially seeing all over the world, the vaccination is going on a high speed. And when do you believe we are willing to see you guys playing live on the world's best stages? I hope as soon as possible, but it's uh, not all in our hands, sadly. No. We need your help out there to uh, get people to 
notice that we're a band you should book. And we really love playing live. And our experience is that everyone at our shows always have a good time. So we're really looking forward to be able to go out and play in as many places as possible as soon as possible. Okay, before I leave, Martin, I want you to say hello to Linus Nibran for me, to the other Linus for me. Say hello to Lincoln Peterson for me. Say hello to Peter Nagy for me. And to all those that was in one way or the other involved in making this great new album, Needles of Ross. Yeah, for sure. I will send your best regards to all of them. Martin, but yes, I know uh, nobody can, you know, say when the shows will start. But do you have at least so far that, you know, any shows booked for if it's not this last part of 2021 for 2022? We have no booked shows so far, but that's also depending on that. We don't have all uh, a complete lineup for live playing yet. We're working on that currently. Okay. We have some backup plan, but we would really like to find someone either a drummer or a guitar player that will uh, take the time to uh, spend it with us on the road. Martin, yes. Uh, once again, I want to hand you over the microphone of Madame Messiah Radio for you to thank whomever you want to thank. For sure. Let's see here now. What would you like me to call you? DJ Vampire? Uh, yeah, Vampire. All right. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, man. First and foremost, I would like to thank you, DJ Vampire and uh, Metal Messiah Radio and your show here, The Bloodshed with the Vampire. It's a really interesting name. You'll have to explain it to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to thank everyone who has been involved in the, the making of uh, Needles of Rust and, of course, everyone who helps us spread the word that Needles of Rust is out there and that this ending is a band you should listen to. And, yeah, on my part, I thank deeply from my heart all the fans of this ending who have stayed true to us. So thank you all. Martin, once again, I wish you all the best with this great new album needles of rust i wish you all the best the thank best. you i wish you all the best for 2022 and yes looking forward to see you guys on the road like it should be i mean this fucking covid took two years out of our life i'm a guy that i go to festivals every year you guys play at festivals every year too doing shows and now two years that we didn't do anything i mean just the good of it is that you guys could have write you guys could have recorded and the good thing that i can catch you guys at home sitting to interview you <laughs> yeah But, you know, it's time to go back on the road. Then I'm looking forward to be flying back to Europe for the festivals this coming year. And I'm looking forward to see you guys anywhere. It could be in Sweden. It could be anywhere in Europe. And yes, for those fans in North America and South America, it would be nice to see you guys over here too. But yes, as I was saying, I wish you all the best. And like I always say, Metal on. Bye-bye. <laughs> Take that one again. Metal, Metal on. Bye-bye. <laughs> Metal on. Bye-bye. <laughs>